Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to those here in chapel, those viewing online. Welcome to our chapel experience this morning. For those who are here in the space with me, we'll do the call to worship and prayer. So if you'll stand. And those online, you may have the information as well. So feel free to participate as if you are in the room. Our call to worship begins this way. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. One generation shall laud your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. On the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works, we will meditate. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. The might of your awesome deeds shall be proclaimed and we will declare your greatness. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Let us bow for a moment of prayer. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. God, as we continue to celebrate Black History Month, we pause in this moment to give you praise. We praise you for the tenacity of a people who suffered and persevered, a people who struggled and overcame, a people who were cut off but survived through their connection with you. God, grant us an ounce of the faith of those whose bodies were bound and bloody but whose faces were still turned to you. God, we give you praise for the riches of that history and for how we are able to continue to build on the backs and stand on the shoulders of those who came before us. We praise you for this day as we gather in your name to experience your grace and your greatness. You, oh God, are worthy to be praised. So God, we pause the busyness of this day. We breathe in your glory and we say, let everything that hath breath Praise the Lord. We offer this prayer of praise in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. If you remain standing for our congregational hymn, On Christ the Solid Rock I Stand.
Seminary, our preacher for the day. I say welcome back because, of course, he is a proud Memphis Theological Seminary alum, graduated from our doctor ministry program. So, of course, uh, if you're watching online and you want to preach like Bishop Zed, come on to Memphis Theological <laughs> Seminary. We would uh, we would be glad to have you. Of course, our preacher for the day is none other than the Reverend Dr. Zedrick Clayton. He is the epitome of what one would call a uh, boy preacher. That is to say, if you could believe it, at the tender age of three, wow. he sensed the call from God and he waited until he was the right old age of 12 uh -huh. to say uh, yeah. to say yes. And of course, and, uh, our great joy is that he has been saying yes ever since. Of course, um, he served for a number of years, I think nine, as senior pastor of the City of Truth there in Clarksdale, Mississippi, during his particular tenure, the Lord blessed. They added well over 700 members and made it the fastest growing church in the Mississippi Delta. In 2021, ministry came full circle for our preacher, and that is he was called, quote unquote, back home to serve the Olivet Baptist Church here in Memphis. I say back home because, of course, he joined that church as a young man, ultimately served there on staff as the youth pastor, went away for nine years to serve another the congregation and they saw fit to welcome him back home. And so it has been a tremendous blessing. I hear word that they're growing like wildfire over there because he is back at home. So who knows? They invited him back home and they were blessed. So we invited him back home and I trust and believe that we will be blessed as well. So the next preaching voice that you will hear will be that of our guest preacher of the day, my dear friend and brother beloved, the Reverend Dr. Zedric Clayton. <laughs> Thank you. 
Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We thank you that in through all that we've gone through, we've learned to trust you. We've learned to depend on your word. As a result, we don't feel any ways tired because we are convinced that you have not brought us this far to leave us. Now God is preaching time and God I cannot preach until you come hide me behind Calvary's cross Allowing your people to see you and not me God allow me to decrease as you increase allow me to be minimized as you are maximized Take over my mouth take over my mind that I may think your thoughts and speak your words only that transformation and deliverance will take place God, Give me clarity of thought and accuracy of speech Say what you want to say today do what you want to do today. All we ask is that you show up in a mighty way. It's in Jesus name we pray and we thank you. Amen. Amen. Well, come on, let's just put our hands together and give God praise and glory. <laughs> Truly, it is an honor to be able to be back home and to share here. Uh, in chapel service and to our president, Dr. Hill, and to uh, Dr. Karen Todd, who is the rector of our uh, House of Black Church Studies, and to Dr. Davis, and to all our faculty and staff we and students, we thank God for us being here and to all that are watching online. Uh, I'm, I don't do a lot of preliminaries, and I ain't got much time anyway. So let's, <laughs> let's go jump right into it. Luke chapter number five. Luke chapter number five. I want to begin reading at verse number one. It says this, on one occasion, reading from the English Standard Version, on one occasion while the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret. He saw two boats by the lake, but the fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. 
getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, he asked him to put out a little from the land and sat down and taught the people from the boat. And yet when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep and let down your net for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we have toiled all night and have taught, took nothing, caught nothing. But at your word, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish and the nets were beginning to break. By the time that is ours to share, I want to talk on the subject. Try it again. Try it again. One of the greatest challenges of our faith and even our future is our past failures. When times have come in our lives where things have not worked out the way that we have expected them to work out, when things are, are not coming together like we intended for them to come together, we sometimes begin to declare that maybe this is not what God is intending for me to do. Because if God was in it, it would have worked the first time. If God was in it, it would have come to pass like I saw it in my mind. If God was in it, it would have taken place the way I expected it to take it take place. But as a result, many times our failures begin to try to tell us that whatever we're believing God for may not be in the vein that God is intending for us to walk in. And many of us, truth of the matter is, it's one thing to fail at something you've never tried, but it's a whole nother thing to fail at something you know you're supposed to be good at. And this is the case, brothers and sisters, that Peter finds himself in our text this morning because the Bible said that Jesus had come into the area and he was preaching. And there was such a great crowd of people that Jesus decided that he needed to back up from them in order for, he, for them to be able to hear what he had to say. And here it was that while Jesus was there to encourage the crowd, there were fishermen who were on their way back home being discouraged because because they had worked all night and caught nothing. Can you imagine doing what you know to do, working all day, fingers to the bone and still feeling unproductive? Can you imagine serving in ministry, doing everything you know to do, studying and praying and preaching and doing all of these things and still seeing no results? And here it was that they are there at this moment. Jesus is trying to encourage the crowd, but then decides to get on the boat. While he's there on the boat, finishes preaching, and yet here it is, he begins as almost a uh, honorarium to the to Peter for allowing him to use his boat. He says, "Stretch, launch out into the deep and begin to let down your net for a catch. But here it was that Peter could not understand why Jesus would tell him to do something like this because he begins to immediately tell him, Master, we have toiled all night. Sir, I'm tired. I, I've been out there. I know what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm a fisherman by trade. I've been out there all night and I have not caught anything. I've been out there. We're washing our nets, counting the day as a loss, and we're going back to our own routine because here it is. I don't know how I'm going to explain to my wife and my children and my company that we didn't catch anything. We were unproductive today. He says, but go out into the deep, which lets us know first thing we have to understand is that whenever God allows us to sin, to go into a place of failure or a place where seemingly things are not happening the way we intended it to happen, it means that God says your next call is to go deeper. Because many times when we are doing something that we've always done, many times we become real comfortable and we get into our routine. And as a result, sometimes God, we'll be in a place where we now can do the work without God because we've been doing it so long that we've gotten to a place where we've mastered a certain level so God will sometimes let us fail at that level because the call is to go deeper and I don't know who I'm talking to this morning but maybe you're in a place in your life where it seemed like you're ready to throw in the towel pick up a new career do something different because maybe what you're believing that God has took his hand off of you concerning that thing but I come to encourage you the thing is not to change the assignment is just to go deeper because as we are in this place understanding what we are called to do what we are assigned to do what God has put on our lives to do we do not have the permission to quit the only call is to go deeper 
because we have to understand that the greater thing that God wants to do in our lives requires us to get off the shore. The greater thing that God wants to do in our lives requires us to get out of our comfort zone. We've got to go deeper in our prayer. We've got to go deeper in our worship. We have to go deeper in our study. We have to go deeper in our adoration to God. We have to go deeper in our discipleship. In every area of our lives, we've got to go deeper. Here it was that we have to get out of that place that has been so comfortable for us and understand that God is calling us to a deeper place. And watch this. This is a place for many of us that becomes scary because then it requires us to do something we've never done before. But can I tell you this? Anytime God is calling you for a task, it will always be something you can't do without him. Anytime God is calling you for a task, it will always cause you to have to depend on him. He says, stretch out, launch out into the deep and let down your net for a catch. Now, now Peter, I can believe in his mind, he didn't say it, but in his mind, I believe he was trying to figure out, what, who are you? You're not a fisherman. I'm a fisherman. You're a preacher. I, I'm a fisherman and you, you're a preacher. Stick to the people and I'll stick to the fishing. But here he says because we've been out there all night you done sit up here and done preach on this shore. Everybody done shouting crying and hollering and we already know they done scared all the fish off if there were any fish around. But here it is. But he says, but at your word because sometimes you got to be willing to obey God even when you don't see it you you got to be willing to be obedient to God even when it doesn't make sense to you he says at your word I don't see it I, I don't see how it's gonna come to pass I don't see how it's gonna take place uh, but at your word I don't see how the healing is gonna take place in my body but at your word I don't see how the ministry is gonna change for the good but at your word I don't see how things are gonna get better in my finances but at your word because sometimes uh, you have to have enough faith in God uh, that you ignore your circumstances and obey his word uh, because sometimes uh, if you only look at your problems, uh, you'll be depressed, you'll be, you'll be stressed out, you'll be worried. Uh, but you got to learn uh, how to look beyond your troubles uh, and look at the God that created you. Uh, because the God that created you uh, has the ability to get you out of whatever you find yourself in. But at your word. Because God sometimes will give us strange instructions in critical places. And sometimes the instruction don't match the deliverance you're expecting. But you've got to be willing to obey what God is saying, even though it doesn't make any sense to you. He says, Master, we've toiled all night and we failed. I, 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 I've served here and I failed. I, I've loved these people and I failed. I, I, I've, I've instructed students and I seem like I failed. I, I, I've been doing ministry in my community and it seemed like I'm failing. But God says, try it again. Because here it is that there's some level, some space. Now he says that I need you to bump into the end of your ability so that you can bump into the beginning of my power. That I need you to run out of what you can do because if you if you do it in your own strength, you will take credit for it. But I need you to understand that what I'm going to do for you is so supernatural and so, so great and so mighty that won't nobody be able to take the credit for it but me. And when people have to ask you, how is it that this came to pass? Your only response will be, could nobody but God do this? Here it is. He says, at your word, I I'll stretch, I'll let down my net for a catch. The same nets he was ready to wash. Because notice, God never required him to change his instruments he just required him to change his depth, which means you have everything you need to do what God has already assigned you to do. You just got to go deeper. 
You got to go further. You cannot begin to be in a place where just because it didn't work this time does not mean it's going it's not going to work because we have to understand we serve a God that causes us to bounce back. I, I remember when I was a kid, uh, well, I, I didn't grow up in a, in a fluent family. I, uh, sometimes we things were just, you know, a little rough. And, uh, and so one Christmas, my grandmother, she didn't buy gifts for everybody. She bought one gift for all the cousins. We had one gift for all the cousins and it was called a uh, uh, Mr. Weeble Wobble. Mr. Mr. Weeble Wobble. We had a Mr. Weeble Wobble and uh, of course I was a fan uh, of, of WWF wrestling. This is WWE now but WWF wrestlers when when I when I was watching you know Stone Cold Steve Austin and, and The Rock with the people eyebrow and can you smell la, 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 what The Rock is cooking all that kind of stuff. That's what I was doing and uh, and so I decided uh, that I was going uh, uh, to start uh, hitting on the Mr. Weeble Wobble and every time I hit it it would bounce back it, it would fall down, but it'll bounce back. It, it, I, I, I tried to do the people's elbow, and it'll fall down and it'll bounce back. I did the Stone Cold Steve Austin, and it'll fall down and bounce back. And I ended up getting frustrated and asked my grandmother, what's wrong with this thing? That, that every time I hit it, no matter how hard I hit it, it falls, but it keeps getting back up. She said, son, what you got to understand is that the manufacturer, when they created it, they put something down on the inside of it that no matter how hard you hit it, it keeps bouncing back. And saints, I've come to tell you this morning, that's simply who you are. You Mr. Weeble Wobble. That no matter how life hits you, no matter how hard things are getting, you keep bouncing back because the God you serve has put something on the inside of you that just won't let you stay down. He says, he says, at your word, they let down their nets. The Bible says that something amazing begins to happen. That in the same waters that they had fished and caught nothing. This time they caught such a great harvest of fish that the nets began to break. What was the difference this time? Not only was it the, the, the depth that they went in, but it was also the passenger they had. Because you have to understand, because Jesus was on the boat this time, things were going to work differently. And I'm trying to tell you that while, yes, we, we have our education and our gifts and our abilities and our knowings, but what we cannot do is forget about Jesus. That whenever God has assigned you to a thing, make sure that you got Jesus Jesus on the boat. And when Jesus is on the boat, you will have a harvest that is greater than you ever imagined. I believe that God will give us net breaking miracles and net breaking results when we try it again. I believe that whatever you thought, what everything you thought was impossible and things that couldn't happen and things that wouldn't happen and the things you've given up on and the things you've given up hope on and faith on and joy about, God says, I'm going to breathe on that again because this time I'm not doing it you're not doing it out of your strength but you're doing it out of my power no matter where you are no matter what you've gone through no matter how many times you've tried it no matter how many times you failed at it your word today is do it again try it again because Jesus is on the boat you'll have net breaking results this is the word of God for the people of God thanks be Somebody give God praise for Reverend Dr. Zedrick Clayton II. Hey. I feel like I'm supposed to open the doors of the church. I don't try it again. Try it again. Launch out into the deep. We um we've had some interesting meetings as of late, and for this message to come forth saying launch out into the deep and to try it again, that God will give net breaking miracles and net breaking results. And we receive that. We receive that. Don't let your failures convince you to give up. Um, in the book of Aaliyah, if at first you don't succeed, <laughs> dust yourself off and try again. <laughs> I am grateful for all of those who uh, are here, those who are watching, those who have been coming during uh, Black History Month. This is the month that the House of Black Church Studies hosts our chapel. Also, thank you to all uh, who came to Starks. We had our Starks event last week. We're so very grateful for um, your participation in that. And actually, I'm supposed to give the benediction, but I would like to open the floor to our president if you would like to I love come up. Okay. Thank you. 
to give God praise for? Oh. Reverend Dr. Joey Hill. Wow, doctor. What a wonderful message. Thank you so much, Dr. Cedric, for gracing us with that holy word and inspiration. It was light into our path. Thank you all for worshiping with us. This is holy ground. When we gather in our Lord's name, thank you for leading us here, that beautiful music. When we gather in God's presence to be light and love in this community, we truly are holy ground. Thank you for sharing in our journey. Let us receive together God's blessing for us as Moses shared with the people of Israel. That promise is still true for us. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace now and forever. Amen. God bless you.